welcome to another episode of the Jill Pro Podcast, where we engage culture with Christ Center Solutions. I'm Kristen. And I'm Kristen. And today we're going to talk about personal evangelism and why we should share our own salvation story. Let's get into it. Let's go. So since we're talking about personal evangelism today, I thought that I'd share my salvation story the way that I was saved. So uh, my mother and I, uh, there are times where we would get together in our living room and we would either watch a movie or watch a cartoon. And uh, there were multiple, (laughs) multiple movies that we had watched and multiple cartoons that we had watched. Uh, One of our you know, one of my favorite movies that we watched was Back to the Future, the entire trilogy. By the way, we never got to the for for some reason, the when we watched the third one halfway through the power cut off, we just never got back to it. Maybe we should. But there was one movie that she brought to our attention and said, hey, maybe we should watch this. And it was a movie about Jesus. And I was like, hold up, ma. I don't. I don't know about, I, you know what I'm saying? I, we, you know what I'm saying? We watch Back to the Future and, and, and Jimmy Neutron and, and, <laughs> and, and, <laughs> and, um, and Courage the Cowley Dog, Johnny Bravo, you know. I was about to, say, you know, never mind. The whole Cartoon yeah, Network the, lineup. All, the, the entire Cartoon <laughs> Network line. I was Cartoon Network and Nickelodeon. But anyway, uh, you know, instead of watching SpongeBob, we're going to watch about Jesus. <laughs> so I'm like, uh, I don't know. I don't know, Ma. And then she kept on says like, yeah, I think you would really enjoy it. I'm like, oh, all right, Ma. So we get to watching a the movie. Then all of a sudden out of, you know, it, it was from Jesus' life, you know, when I think when he was a child, then all the way up into his death and resurrection. And we got to the point of his death of of him getting whipped and and going to the cross and i was wondering like what in the world why in the world is this man being uh treated so badly you know and and i and in retrospect i realized that it was more towards um you know i I related to what jesus was going through because i felt like i was being tortured i went through a lot of bullying at that time so it was it was it really resonated to me because he was going through something that i didn't uh understand uh you know that i didn't understand why he was going through that you know and i didn't understand why i was going through the bullying that i was going through uh so i resonated with that and you know i was very sad when he when he when he was crucified and he died i was like wow what what's going on how did all this happen but then when he resurrected and i I, at the time i believe that he was given the great commission to the disciples and he rose uh ascend he he ascended into heaven and i just started crying now my mother was <laughs> my mother was scared because she thought that she had just scared her her little child. You know, I was very young at the time. She told me that. Uh and so she she asked me what's wrong and I tell her that what I had just seen was beautiful. Now now that's confusing to a ch- to a mother. <laughs> it's like you just saw all this whipping and all this dying. <laughs> you know, say you just saw this bad die. Then he rose to rose to life, and it was beautiful to you. I would have been confused as a parent. I would have been like, "What are what is going on?" So my mother asked me questions about what I had just seen and see if I it, to see if I understood it. And right where we are recording this episode is where I prayed with my mother and I accepted Christ at seven years old. Wow. Yeah. This feels like holy ground then. It is holy ground. (laughs) (laughs) It was very sacred. It's extremely sacred. Uh, I don't even think about it that time sometimes, but it, it, this is, this is where I, this is where I was saved. Wow. So, Kristen, what's your salvation story? Uh, <laughs> wow, I just wanted I to. So, so what? So, yeah. So, what is your salvation story, Kristen? So, mine, um, like yours, happened when I was when I was very young. Um, mm-hmm. 
Yeah, very young. And it's it's one of those things that um I don't I don't remember a time where I was not introduced to Jesus because it started when I was so young. Mm-hmm. So my great grandmother, um, bless her heart, she's ninety six years old. She'll be ninety seven next month. Ninety six years young. Years young, yes. Her attitude shows it. <laughs> but ah! she is a she is a preacher's kid. She is a preacher's grandkid, and she is a preacher's great grandkid. So she grew up in the church, lived in the church. All she ever knew was church. Like she still reads her Bible every day, to this day. Like without without fail, mm. um, she opens her Bible and she reads it. So growing up for me was as early as I could as I could talk. Um, at night, she would have my first cousin and I um, on the side of her bed praying every night. Before we went to sleep, that was our nightly ritual, was to pray with her, uh, to read the Bible with her. Um, we started off with uh, with Psalm 23. We went on to the Our Father prayer. Um, my favorite scripture growing up was John 3.16. So there was always some level of of spirituality that I was being influenced by. But the earliest um, that I can remember was being on the side of her bed every night praying before we went to bed. I guess that I don't even have a date, have an age for it because it happened <laughs> right. because it happened so early. Um, but when I was between the ages of of six and eight was when I made the decision to to be baptized. Um, was when. I told my mom that I was ready because after going to daycare at a church, after going, after being in Catholic school, also it's a lot of God. There was, there was, like I said, theology. there was, there was always, there was always something, um, and so yeah, between the ages of six and eight was when I made the decision that I wanted to get baptized and I still have the Bible. <laughs> I still have the the right. Burgundy New King James Bible that was given to me once I made that declaration that I wanted to be baptized. Mm-hmm. And that's a long time. You said 99? Yeah. Yeah. About yeah, about 1999. So yeah, I was so I was 6 years old. Yeah. That Bible's that Bible's twenty years old. Oh yeah, that Bible has. It's twenty one. You can look at it and see that it's been through a lot. <laughs> yeah, the, you know it's really funny. There was a podcast that was, um, you know, and it, it was these two guys and they were joking around, and uh, he said, uh, <laughs> he said uh, he was like, now some of y'all got some Bibles out there that look too clean, <laughs> <laughs> right? Because that's how you know. He was like, and and he pulled out his Bible. He was like, my grandmother told me that a a torn up Bible is a life put together. Mm -hmm. And he pulled out his Bible. He was, it was all torn up. The, 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 the opening, you know what I'm saying? The cover of it was ripped off. And he was like, this should tell you that my life is solid. (laughs) I I was convicted by that actually. Uh I went to, uh, I went to a conference and the speaker, she was, she was talking about how like her Bible was marked up, how there were prayers, how there were highlights, how there were this, how there were that. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it was one of those, oh, wait, my mine doesn't look exactly like that. You know? I mean, my, my phone's cracked up. Does that mean? <laughs> no. <laughs> Does no. That... <laughs> Does no. that count for anything? Uh, no. So you know. for me, that was a challenge to put down the phone uh-huh. and get back into the actual word so that, oh you God, know. Man. There was a video. There was a really funny video where I saw it was just like the, the social media preacher. Uh, there were a few. Uh, but this particular video, it was like, um, you know, he was like, everybody turn your Bibles to Romans. Cha- uh, my Bible died. No, 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 no. <laughs> it, was his, it was his iPad. That <laughs> he, he had that he was like, uh, my, my Bible died. I was like, I was dying See, laughing. I was, like, you have backup, I was like, well, either either you have a backup or you have a portable charger. <laughs> Where are you going to plug that back? <laughs> The a portable charger, like a charger, oh, like charger, a, okay, yeah, like a, like a okay, charger, okay. yeah, yeah. So, um, but uh, we kind of got into a rabbit trail. But it's 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 good. 
uh, to have these kind of stories. You know, I'm glad that, you know, we, we have stories of where we recognized that we made a decision for Christ. People have the life before Christ. Well, we didn't really have that because we were so young. Uh, you know, we had our lives before Christ. We had an encounter with Christ and then we accepted Christ. You know what I'm saying? We had to make a decision whether or not we were going to go with Christ or go with the enemy. And we decided to uh, accept Christ. And then we have our lives after Christ, you know. And so uh, I know that um, for me, uh, my life before Christ, it was just like, I just want to play video games all day, you know, as a child or even as a child. You know what I'm saying? That's normal for a child. But um, you know, I didn't really want to go to church. I didn't really want to do anything. But then when I accepted Christ, you know, when I encountered Christ in my living room, you know, my attitude about it changed, which of course, as when you get saved that young, you know, you're you're saved, but uh <laughs> you have a moment in time where you have to rededicate your life to Christ. You know, people talk about rededicating your life to Christ. Uh, when I was uh, about nine or 10, I thought I knew everything. You know, I was so judgmental and all those different things. Like I've mentioned, um, you know, in a previous episode about judgmental Christians. And, um, you know, I had to go through that whole situation of being a church kid and growing up in church and all those different things. And um, at, at the age of 18, that's when I started to really uh, grow in my relationship with the Lord, started reading the word for myself, uh, certain strongholds that were in my life, uh, they, you know, I started to take notice of those things and really do something about it. You know, uh, you know, the, the, the Lord, one thing I've kind of learned as I've grown in my relationship with the Lord is that, you know, the, 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 you, the, the Lord wants you to see what you're doing, but he wants you to do something about it. He doesn't want you to just see it and sulk over and over and over again. Uh, so that's what I started to do when I was 18. And, uh, you know, it hasn't been perfect. Uh, <laughs> even when I was saved at seven, you know, my life has not been perfect. But my life with Christ has been so much better uh, since I since that day. So, uh, so when you, you say mm-hmm. a life with Christ, what do you, like what do you mean? What is that? What does that feel like? For you? What it's, does it look like? It's a dependence on him. It's it's a continual going to him, seeing what he has to say, praying to him, um, having a conversation with him, sometimes just sitting there and listening. You know what I'm saying? Like it's 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 a life with Christ is sinning less. Like if you know, if you have a certain behavior uh, and you're doing and you're making progress with that, that's what. That's what I feel like a life with Christ looks like. It doesn't look like a perfect life, but it looks it looks different as time goes on. You know, I've heard this all the time. Like, you know, if you got saved at 18 and by 25, you don't look different then something's wrong. You know, like there's salvation once I believe once saved, always saved. Like once you accept Christ, you know, what I'm saying you're you're sealed with the Holy Spirit and you just keep going, keep moving on. But uh, sanctification, there's a sanctification that's there as well. So, um, you know, it's a definitely a process and the process is, is called sanctification. So if there's a process that you don't go through, um, you know, what I'm saying you, you, you might <laughs> you might not be uh, walking with Christ uh, like you should, you know what I'm saying? And if you recognize that, you can, there's, the, you, you, it's never too late to turn around, you know what I'm saying? We go through those certain situations because, um, you know, if, if we never really went through anything, we wouldn't have anything to evangelize <laughs> to anyone with. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, if we have a story of salvation and we don't have a story and we have a story of sanctification. Uh, we should go out and tell people about that. Not just not just tell them and leaving, but <laughs> but telling them, develop a relationship with that person, and then you know continue to tell them the the message of the gospel through uh, through the scriptures and also through your life as well. And so when we don't do that, we prevent the Lord from using us to minister to people. You know, what I'm saying it's our job to to minister. You know what I'm saying? To minister to others. It's not our job to save people. It's our job mm. to minister to people. You know, saying like, you know, there's that saying, you know, you can't save anybody. 
you know, uh, but you have to be obedient to allowing the Lord to to minister to someone. And when right. we don't do that, you know, what I'm saying we're being disobedient, you know, um, you yeah. know, we, we, we. Yeah. And I think also, um, you know, it's really important that when we tell our stories, it's important that we tell the whole story. Because for me, I could easily stop at, you know, saying the basics or just sticking to the beginning and saying, you know, like, well, I'm too young to remember my exact, you know, like my very first encounter with the name Jesus Christ. But I can tell you that it was, you know, on the side of my great grandmother's bed and I got baptized at six but if I don't tell you anything more, how is that going to help you? You know, so if I don't tell you about the struggles that I encountered, you know, when I was when I was in high school, like if I don't tell you the struggles that I encountered when I got to college, like if I don't tell you my struggles, but only tell you the good parts about right. it, you know, like right. that's that's pointless. Like that doesn't that doesn't help anybody. Mm -hmm. You know, so if I'm not honest, if I don't tell you the entire story, mm -hmm. just like the Great Commission, it says, go ye therefore, you know, and make disciples, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, but then telling them, teaching them all that you know, and you know your full experience, you know, like you just don't know the good things. You also know some bad things, too. And so part of evangelism is being able to share that whole story to say not only where God has brought you, but to be honest and say what God is still working on in you mm -hmm. as well. Because a lot right. of people, you know, and I think that's the problem and why we don't evangelize, why we don't tell people our story is because we think we have to tell them when we get to the end. But the wow. truth, you know, the truth is we'll never get to the end until, until we die. <laughs> so right. It's like we're uh -huh. always on this journey. So the thing about the and the thing about the journey is that's what you tell people. Even Paul said, I have not yet arrived, but I continue to press towards the mark of a higher calling. So if we're if we're pressing, if we're living Life is struggle, so we're going to continue to struggle. So that's how we evangelize people. That's how we help them when we tell them our true testimony, when we tell them the truth about, you know, where we are in life, when we can confess our struggles. And then when the person asks, well, how are, how are you making it? Not how have you made it, but how are you making it? And that's when you can tell them, you know, like about about Jesus Christ. You can tell them about the peace as the past is all understanding. You can tell them, no, I'm not perfect. Yes, I still sin. Yes, I still have problems. Yes, I'm still battling this. However, I have Jesus. However, you know, like he's He's keeping me. I still have bad days. I still have days when I question why is this happening. Like I still have bad days when when I don't want to be bothered like I still have my bad days but even in even on my worst day I still trust in Jesus and I think that's the difference because when we have you know it's like one of those things when we know that the Holy Spirit is within us when we inherently know that we live our lives differently and I think that's what what the true evangelism is. And we can live our lives differently, be honest about them and then share that with others. Yeah, that's that is very true. We don't want to be fake Christians. No. <laughs> Who wants to be? You know, what I'm saying Jesus wasn't fake. Why? We, why should we? It's um, an oxymoron in itself. That is like a fake Jesus. No, I don't. Be. I don't want fake Jesus. Not at you ain't all. gonna get fake Christians. So. Um, I think that's one of the issues, honestly, in the United States when it comes to Christianity. Mm. We don't tell the whole story. Mm -mm. We just tell people, "Oh, Jesus loves you," but we we don't we <laughs> we don't like to tell people about why Jesus had to save us from our sins. Mm. You know what I'm saying? How bad our sin actually was. How much Jesus hates our sin. Like he hate he 
hates like think about how the maddest you've ever been times a thousand that's how mad god is about our sin you know what i'm saying but his love is so great as well that he he died for us while we were yet sinners christ Mm. died for us so that's what we need to tell people as well give people the whole truth about your life but then also give people the full gospel the whole gospel yeah so yeah that's that's some really good stuff so um a question that we have um the question is you know because let me be honest there are times where i have uh wanted to share my story with somebody but then i thought to myself how can my story (laughs) you know how can my story minister to this person you know what i'm saying like you ever had those people that you know they they were angola they were doing cocaine and all those kind of different things then all of a sudden they got saved and they never they never touched cocaine ever again i don't have that story i got saved as a seven-year-old in my in my living room (laughs) <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I, I didn't have all that. So with the, the as significant as you think it is or as insignificant as you think it is, the fact that Jesus saved you is significant. So how can our story minister to someone else? Uh, the scripture that we are coming from is uh, Romans 10, 8 through 14. And it reads... In fact, it says, the message is very close at hand. It is on your lips and in your heart. And that message is the very message about faith that we preach. If you openly declare that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is by believing in your heart that you are made right with God. And it is by openly declaring your faith that you are saved. As the scriptures tell us, Anyone who trusts in him, anyone who trusts in him will never be disgraced. Jew and Gentile are the same. Jew and Gentile are the same in this respect. They have the same Lord who gives generously to all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. But how can they call on him to save them unless they believe in him? And how can they believe in him if they have never heard about him? And how can they hear about him unless someone tells them? Mm. So I think about my mother sharing the Lord with me. I dread to think about what my life would be like with if she didn't do that. Yeah. You know, I, I you know, because it's, it's very important to share you know, and, and, and at times in the past, she's definitely shared her story um, with the different circles that she's had. And, uh, you know, she felt as though, you know, not only as um, her being um, my mother, but also as a believer, it is important if it was her responsibility. It felt she felt as though it was her responsibility to share the gospel with someone like verse eight says, you know, it, the message is cl- very close at hand. It's on our li- It's on your lips. So it's it, it shows that it's our responsibility to share the gospel with somebody. You know, the scripture does say go and, and, and preach the gospel to all nations. Uh, I'm paraphrasing, by the way. Um, you know, but you may not be able to reach everybody, you know, (laughs) in your life. But, you know, saying that doesn't mean that the people around you should know about Christ because you never told them. Uh, And also, you know, verse nine through 13 tells you how salvation happens and the benefits of being saved. And, And it also explains that Jew and Gentile. You know, Jews were God's original chosen people and the Gentiles were anyone who's not a Jew. So if you're not Jewish, you're a Gentile. And uh, there was a big thing going on in the Roman church about Jews and Gentiles being divided. You know, racial division was in the Bible uh, even back in the ancient times. And that's a whole nother podcast for a whole nother day. Mm. But it talks about anyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. If you had the cure for cancer, would you hide that from people? I wouldn't. Right. So, you know, you anyone in your family who you know has cancer, you would tell them about, the, you know, the, this cure, you know? Yeah. And so if we have the cure 
for all diseases. If we have the the way, the truth, and the life, the person who changed our lives forever, yeah. why are we being silent about that? <laughs> why are we being why are we being silent about that? It's because we don't we don't we want we want to keep our status. We want to keep our you know uh, our way. You know we we don't know how people will. Um, uh, we won't know how people will respond to the way that we do it. Well, you know, if it does say in the scripture, and and I I don't know spe- I forgot specifically where it was, but uh, you know if if you deny if you uh, if you deny me on earth, I'll deny. Anyway, so it, it's just um, it's important for us to do that. You know, it's very important for us to minister and evangelize to people because it is definitely our responsibility and people's lives are on the line for us sharing that. You know, I think about this one particular time where, you know, one of my friends, uh, I was on the phone with two of my friends and one of my friends was like, Kristen, you know, if somebody on the other side of the world um, was uh, didn't know who Christ was, they're going to. They're going to hell. And I said, well, yeah, that's, that's what I believe. And he was like, see, that's the problem with you Protestants. You're always sending people to hell. And I was like, <laughs> whoa. That speaks to the fact that we don't want to be responsible for ministering to other people. I, You know, I, I, I shared that with him saying that, you know, it's our responsibility to go to the other side of the world to minister to other people. And we'll get to that in another episode. But, you know, it's 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 our job. <laughs> it's our job. It's our not. It's not our job to save people, but it's our job to be used by God to do that. Right. It's our job to to plant and to water, and then God gives the growth. God gives. God gives the increase. And Kristen, the scripture that you were looking for was Matthew ten thirty three, and it says, "But whoever disowns me before others, I will disown before my Father in heaven." Or um, the NLT says, but everyone who denies me here on earth, I will also deny before my father in heaven. And so what, you know, what the scripture is is telling us just to sum it up is that if we are believers, if we are, if we truly believe in Jesus, then we have the responsibility to live the life. And so to answer your question, Kristen, about why don't we share our personal stories, I think, I mean, there's so many levels, there's such depth about, about why, and, you know, each person may have a different answer, but for a lot of people, I think the answer is because we aren't really living the life. Oh my Lord. Like I said, I get, you know, like I gave the one earlier about us thinking that we have to, we have to be finished. We have to be out of it before we go back and, um, before we go back and, and tell everybody, but think about a student teacher, a student teacher is still in school. And so when a student teacher comes, comes along to, you know, to share a message or to even just be there to assist the teacher, they're a student. So they're also working on this too. You know, they're, they're also in school, still progressing, still working towards something. It's not that they've arrived in there and that they're finished, but they're, they're in this process. And so on the other side of that, you know, we also have to ask ourselves, are we really living the life? Because I can tell you, you know, I can tell you a really good story. Mm -hmm. I can tell you about what Jesus is doing for me. But if I walk around on a regular basis when I'm not supposed to be in, in preacher mode or in teacher mode or, you know, in whatever mode I'm supposed to be in when I share the message with you, if when I'm not doing that, if you catch me outside of church, what will you see? You know, is the question I think a lot of people have to answer because we, you know, like we do a lot on Sunday morning. We yeah. do a lot. You know, yeah. I'm a Sunday school teacher. I'm a Bible study teacher. You know, like I, I do a lot in front of people. But what happens behind closed doors? What happens when I'm not in when I'm not in front of those people? And so evangelism 
has to start with your own life. So yeah, we have a salvation story, but our life has to be our testimony. Right. Our life has to be what others see and know that we are true believers in Jesus Christ because it doesn't just stop when we tell somebody we have to live it. And so if people see me praising the Lord on Sunday morning, but by Sunday night, I'm cussing like a sailor. I'm out there doing God knows what, living for myself, a rebel without a cause. Like, how how will I be viewed then? And so, you know, some people, some people shy away from their story when they know that they aren't living right. You know, some people haven't haven't broached that part of of their walk with the Lord where they want to do the right thing, you know, or where they want to do something different, not necessarily right or wrong. But some people haven't decided that they that they want to change for Christ, that they want to do those things. So because, you know, because they mess up, because they because they are broken, because they are whatever they think that they can't minister you know to other people but the thing about it is the little bit of Jesus that you know can still be a seed like a mustard seed is a teeny tiny it's very small and so if you can if you can just plant that mustard seed if you can just tell somebody that's going through something hey I'm praying for you yeah your life not might look all the way right at the moment, you know, you may not be where you want to be, but if you can just plant that tiny seed in somebody's life, somebody else is going to come behind you and water it. God promises that. And so, but if you plant the little bitty seed that you can, that can make a huge impact. Yes, you still have to work on you. Yes, you still have to get yourself together. Yes, you have to be the person that you are professing to be on Sunday morning. Like, yes, you still have to work on that. But you also have to plant the seeds where God is calling you to plant them. And you still have to do the work, you know, while he's calling you to do it. So it's it's okay Because none of us are perfect. We have all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. But it's about us acknowledging it, continue to work through it, and continue to plant those little seeds along the way. And continue to do that until we reach glory. Because we're not going to stop until we get there. Because we can't feel like we've arrived and then say, okay, I've met my quota. It's like, no. You have to keep (laughs) going. You have to keep pouring. You have to keep planting. You have to keep watering. Because that's what God has called us to do. As we are working on ourselves, going to the Lord for ourselves, and while we're ministering to other people, uh, you know, one thing that we could do is to pray for the pray to the Lord to send people our way to minister to them. You know, um, you know, sometimes uh, people don't come our way until the Lord, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? The Lord's waiting for us to ask uh, that question as well. So um, that's one, one thing that we could, that's another thing that we could do um, as well. And, you know, there are times where I have wanted to, um, where I have been fearful of sharing. Uh, but you know, the Lord doesn't want us to be afraid. The Lord hasn't given us a spirit of fear. You know, that's in second Timothy one. Um, and so just don't be afraid and then also pray for people, uh, to come your way. You know, don't be afraid and pray for people to come your way. The question that we want to leave you with is, uh, what would it look like if we were to share our salvation story to others? Or more importantly, do we have one? So that's the question that we want to leave you with. It's important for you to have a salvation story in order to minister, in order to evangelize someone else. Uh, But if you don't have one, uh, we we encourage you to accept Christ today, even as you're listening to this podcast, you know, so um, we're going to we'll um, gonna have a word of prayer now. So, uh, Chris, would you be able to lead us out in prayer? Of course. Lord God, we just thank you right now. 
Lord God, we thank you for sending us on this mission, Lord God. We thank you for trusting us with with this job, Lord God. You ask us to be your co-laborers, Lord God. So I thank you for this mission, Lord God. I thank you for this call, Lord God, that we are called to go out, Lord God, and to, and to evangelize others, Lord God. But before we can do that, Lord, we have to know you. We have to have a relationship with you. We have to have an encounter with you, Lord God. So I pray for everybody that is listening to this podcast, Lord God. I pray that everyone either has a relationship with you or desires one, Lord God. I pray that they will take time to get to know you, Lord God. And even though their lives may be perfect, Lord, may not be perfect, Lord, I pray that they take every opportunity that they have, Lord God, to to talk to you, Lord God. And then when they talk to you, Lord God, and you feel them, Lord God, that they will then go out, Lord, and that they will share what you have given them, Lord God, and they can just live a life that is honoring to you, Lord God. That way, when people see them, Lord, they can they can come to them, Lord God, and ask, "What is it? What is it that's making you different, Lord God?" And that gives them the the opening to speak about you, Lord God. So I pray that we seek those connections with you, Lord God, and that we seek them with others. And I ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you for tuning in. And as always, whatever the problem, Jesus is the ultimate solution. Always remember that Jesus is Lord. Talk to you next week.